everyone, welcome to Network Special, the podcast where we look at TV events that were only played once. I'm Zachariah Durr. I'm Nathan Shear. And I said the name of the series right this time, so I'd <laughs> like a big pat on the back. Virtual. Thank you. Virtual pat. After an accidental murder, Ronald, a lonely and unpopular boy, takes refuge in a fantasy world. All will be for nothing if we don't heed the rules. Today I begin joining Princess Fancetta. She's the ruler of Atlanta. An existence that becomes inescapable and deadly. Starring Kim Hunter, Dabney Coleman, and Scott Jacoby in a compelling thriller. Today we're going to be talking about Bad Ronald, which is a 1974 thriller movie um, that is incredibly odd, and I had no knowledge about it. You actually clued me into it. How did you first hear about this movie? Probably when I started really getting into TV movies just in general, just, you know, remembering old movies. And then, um, I got like a book that was all about the different movies and like the a- ABC movie of the week or the, which is where this, um, which is where bad Ronald aired, but CBS had one NBC. They all kind of had, these movies that they would um, put out there because it was too expensive to, uh, you know, get the rights to show the movie, the ma- real movies in in the movie theater on their TV. So they started paying for these kind of low budget movies, and uh, I think that's where I first heard about Bad Ronald. This is a really really odd movie for <laughs> a lot of reasons. Um, it is simultaneously slow paced but moves incredibly quickly uh, <laughs> uh somehow uh let's it's lay, like a roller coaster it is <laughs> it's a roller coaster but it drops you down immediately yeah. and then you have a slow ascent yeah uh it's a so like a water log ride <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like a log flume yeah Bad Ronald, and for whatever reason i had the hardest time remembering the name of this movie uh, and I realized I could not remember the name, so I wrote down all the names that I immediately thought of when I was trying to think of it. Uh, among them was Almanzo's Medicine. Okay. Where's Tony? Okay. And Bad Harry. Yeah. <laughs> you were almost there. You. Were, I was. I really got close at the end. There. Uh, but it's Bad Ronald, which right off the bat, I'm going to say that is a misleading title for this mm. this movie. But let's dive in. First of all, I grew up, uh, we're basically the same age, uh, mm-hmm. but I grew up in the early 80s, so I was watching things on TV that were left over from the 70s. Mm-hmm. So th- the look of this movie is exactly how I remember TV looking when I was growing up, meaning that everything is a weird shade of brown. <laughs> Both because of the sort of earth tones that they would decorate everything in in the mid 70s, but also because of I don't know what was it with film stock in the 70s? They were just like filming everything on old wax paper. It seemed to (laughs) disintegrate immediately. Everything looks like you dumped tea over the film negative. Yeah, there's a haze. There's definitely like a I don't know if it's something that. represents some metaphor that represents the economy at the time or something but like <laughs> that was the malaise yeah definitely there's a fogginess of all tv from that era <laughs> it also gives everything an immediate sleazy look mm-hmm. for whatever reason i we really associate the 70s with pure sleaze it, it, and it's if you are watching let's say you watch this movie bad ronald which is um super creepy or you watch uh, Trapper John MD or whatever, like they have the same fog. So it, these shows all feel like there's this cr- dread about to creep in. This is the first shared universe was all of the 70s. <laughs> yeah. So Trapper MD was going on down the street from Bad Ronald. <laughs> yeah. Happening in the same place of whatever uh, movies were coming out of like a Boogie Night style studio. Mm-hmm. 
So immediately everything looks sticky and brown, which is actually perfect for this movie uh, because stickiness is and dirt are big themes. So be- before I, something I thought that was kind of interesting was, so I, I mentioned the movie of the week and before I think it was just kind of like a um, like Monday night was when they would have this ABC movie of the week and people loved it. It was like top in the ratings. And so they're like, you know, what's next? Should we do a sequel? They're like, yeah, let's do Tuesday movie of the week. So they started doing at one point it was like, it was a weekend movie of, or it was like the movie of the weekend. Then Tuesday movie of the week went like there was at one point it was every night of the week, except like Wednesday and Friday they had a movie of the week happening. It was a misleading name. They got very, very <laughs> hungry for those ratings. <laughs> yeah, and, they, they, um, and actually, that's one, uh, uh, as usual, that's one of the things that kind of led to this not happening as much in later years is that people just started hating these things. <laughs> and the quality went down. And I think it's enough start- already. We want our. Our it, Barney Millers, I don't know. <laughs> it, <laughs> people demanded it. Yeah. I think it made for TV just became synonymous with cheap. Yeah. Yes. And it, yeah. And it's not wrong. No, right? it's not wrong. It's interesting because the only place where it still thrived after a certain point was Lifetime. And it's <sighs> never gone away. Lifetime's movies of the week have never dipped in terms of their viewership. Hmm. Oh, um, and, well, now it's <laughs> Lifetime and uh, Hallmark. Oh, gosh. I can't wait for our first Hallmark movie. Oh, no. Can we call this whole thing off? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a woman who's too busy for love fall in love with the guy who runs her deceased mom's cabin. <laughs> and someone definitely needed to run that cabin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, and I'm springing this on you, but we didn't talk about it beforehand. I would like to do something where, in a case like this, we talk about what we think the movie is going to be about or the show is going to be about before we watch it. Okay. Um, and to let you know, the only thing I knew about Bad Ronald is I'm seeing the the VHS release poster uh, it has Bad Ronald. It has a picture of our protagonist, a, a young teen. He's got – it's black and white, so you don't know if it's dirt or blood all over his chest. It says Bad Ronald in a big scrawl and then a, a little silhouette of a psycho-looking house. And the tagline is, the Wilby place is haunted by a ghost who isn't dead. <laughs> you saw this movie before I did. What did you think Bad Ronald was going to be about? Or did you already know? Uh, I knew because I read – um, I read the description. That's what made me want to see it. Well, it looks like my first feature is going nowhere. <laughs> Down the tubes. I assumed from the kid's look, the, the lead actor, Scott Jacoby, who I think was 18 when this movie was made, he has a kind of young David Koresh, um, <laughs> Dahmer-ish look to him. So I assumed I saw that- online someone say, uh, or... Someone says he looks like a young Steven Spielberg. He has, yes. He has the young, uh, soft, pillowy hair of a young Jewish leading actor that was very <laughs> popular in this time period. Um, so I thought this was going to be a movie where he murders his parents and is hiding under something like that, which is uh, not super far from the truth. So let's, let's dive yeah. into it. You know, besides this being your birthday today, well, um, tomorrow's another anniversary of sorts. Ten years ago tomorrow, your father and I were divorced. We f- meet our main characters, which is Ronald Wilby and his mom, Elaine, uh, who's played by actress Kim Hunter, who was Stella in Streetcar Named Desire. She mm. was a big older movie actress and they're having the most depressing birthday party imaginable. (laughs) They are eating various lumps of Brown, including a big Brown chocolate cake. (laughs) Um, 
we when I when I started watching this, I said out loud to the person I was watching with, I said, is this based on a play? Because immediately all the exposition is given out during this kid's is he 16? How old is he turning? 16 or 18? I was trying to count the candles. I think I counted 18, but then I um I was reading some stuff online. I think he's 16. Okay, that makes a little more sense for what's happening here. Um, we learn that uh, his he has grown up only with his mother. She tells him mm-hmm. during his birthday party, which is only the two of them, mm-hmm. that she took full custody of him and he will never speak to his father. Mm-hmm. And that she is sick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that she wants him to be a doctor when he grows up so he can make her well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's her plan for her son. It's also very hard to tell. He seems to like her in this Norman Bates psycho kind of way. Like they have this very close bond. Um, but I couldn't tell through the dialogue if he is kind of resistant to being with her or he enjoys it. Um. I, I, you know, they don't make it seem like she's like abusive or something. Like, I mean, emotion, you know, like emotionally it, abusive, yes, maybe she's unhealthy. They, they have an unhealthy relationship. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like she like, like, cause she lets him go out. And even though she tells him not to, she right. still lets him go out and stuff. So it's like, I just, it's just one of those things where like, Obviously, she had a problem with the father, and regardless of whether or not the father is a good guy, she was like, no way. This guy's not getting in anywhere near my kid. Yeah, we're not really told why they divorced. Um, regard- I, wish, I wish they would have. I, I wish Any I w- backstory would have been nice, honestly. I felt like and maybe the book that this is based on... Uh, yeah, oh. deals with that more. But I felt like we'll get into that book later. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I, <laughs> I felt like um, they wanted you to feel like the dad, like that the dad was probably just a normal dude, um, and she's being the crazy person. Yeah, it's very hard to tell who the villain of this world is. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, I we'll guess get we're into all that. villains when you really I, think about it. Oh, wow. I guess this movie is better than I thought. <laughs> so he continues having the most depressing birthday ever. Oh, I'm sorry. He gets a toolbox and yeah, a series he is, of markers for his he birthday. He is pumped about this toolbox, by the way. It has everything is what he says. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he he receives some artist markers and says – this is great. I can finally illustrate the kingdom of. A, a tra- a, <laughs> okay, I'm stumbling over it. Yes, you tell me. It's a tranta. So it's a tranta. So a treu mixed with Atlanta. Okay, a very hard name to understand when it is said, and it is said maybe twice in this movie. That's an hour long. Um, so it's a tranta. <laughs> she just says that's fantasy. Where are you off to? I won't be long. I'm going over to Laurie Matthews. You shouldn't waste your time with someone who doesn't care. Uh, And he goes outside to visit a girl he has a crush on. Well, Atranta is not fantasy. It's real. Right. So that's Uh, your first clue that there's something a little off about him. (laughs) As opposed to just being a homebody. Yes. Let's get into that in a second, because okay. he, he goes over to this girl's house next door that he has a crush on, or across the street, I guess. Yes. And his mom says to not do this because uh, she knows that he, she treats him badly. Yes. He he goes over to uh, this girl's house. She's having a pool party with her Nazi youth style friends. They're all blonde <laughs> and blue eyed and beautiful bodied. And he just kind of like sits by the edge of the pool and they basically point and laugh at him and splash him, with splash water. him. Yes. Um, I mean, they are mean to him in a really extreme way where they say, come over when you can't spend so much time here. <laughs> 
which is a pretty good burn. Uh, <laughs> he leaves. Well, first he asks her out. He does, yes. He asks her out. She, uh, she says of, no. She, uh, she kind of gently lets him down. She, she right. doesn't say, like, with you, no way. Doesn't she say something like, oh, Ronald or something? Yeah, it seems like they grew up together and he's just kind of an awkward kid. Um, it's very hard to tell because the kid they cast is a good enough looking kid and he's not doing like physical tics. He's not, as far as I can tell, he's no, not he dressing look, like a weirdo. No, he looks like a set, like he was like on the, the set of Sesame street, you know, like he just looks like a seventies dude. Like, right. And I think this is a case where if they had cast it differently and you kind of got the idea that this is a real outcast, it would make more sense, but it just kind of seems like everybody else is a huge jerk and he's a totally normal person. Right. Um, he leaves the party. Don't touch me. He's only going to help you up. Now that you've done it, it's brand new. I'm a mess. Why didn't you get out of my way? Well, I didn't see you. You should party. watch where you're going, Carol. <sighs> And then immediately <laughs> runs into the girl he's asked out, yes. little sister riding up on a bike. Yes. And he, then, he, he knocks, he's jumping from like a higher level of concrete or something. And he accidentally knocks her off her bike. Yeah. Then he picks her up and apologizes. She's and she makes fun of him. A huge <laughs> snot about it. She says, wow, you're all dressed up. They're dressed the same. They all have the same like weird 70s outfit where it's a suit on a kid, like a wide lapeled suit for men and women. Well, it looks like it looks like it looks like a suit after you jumped into a pool wearing it. (laughs) (laughs) Or like everyone's wearing fatigues. Right. Yeah. So uh, he starts to leave and she insults his mother (laughs) He turns around and says, take it back, which, you know, fair enough. He, she just slammed his mom, yeah. his only friend, apparently. Yeah. He pushes her over and the girl well, goes. Well, hold on. Hold on. What? Okay. First, he grabs her by the face. Yeah. And very slowly looks into her eyes and then launches her. Does he? I got the impression that he just pushed her down he does but it, it <laughs> the way it's, since it's in slow motion it looks like it's all happening like the bionic man or something it's like <laughs> <laughs> and then she you know basically you know she lays down on this rock <laughs> <laughs> okay the idea is i think yes i think the way they had to shoot this because they were dealing with close-ups slow motion and children as actors yes. it's very hard to tell how much was intentional? He, in either way, he pushes her over and she goes down with her head right against a cement block. Like she's laying down on a little cement block pillow. But he, he basically curb stops this girl. He does not. <laughs> <laughs> he pushes her down and her head lands on a cement block, I guess breaking the back of her skull or her neck or something. And yeah. she immediately dies. She's done. She's done. Um, he asks her. He immediately is freaked out. He goes yeah. down. He says, why are you joking? Please wake up. You know, he's like, what is this? He's I a mean, freaked out kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so far, it seems like, I mean, I'm not saying you should push anyone down, but in a teen style fight, this more seems like unlucky Ronald so far. Oh, yes. To immediately kill yes. a friend's, uh, 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 another teen's sister. Yes. Smash cut to... Ronald! Where have you been all this time? Matthews, I told you I was going. What happened to your jacket? I tore it on a fence. What has happened? Ronald, tell me. He comes home late to his house. He's covered with dirt. Yeah, he's covered with dirt. It's very hard to tell because of the film. But he's covered with dirt. (laughs) And he tells his mother that he killed a girl and buried her in the park. Well, he, he first she said, this is maybe this is another clip moment, but she says, what's the matter? And he's just hemming and hawing. And then finally he goes, I don't even want to tell you. 
I killed Carol Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is eight minutes into an hour long movie. <laughs> This Things is, are happening at the most rapid clip imaginable. They're just tossing you in the deep end of this yes. thing. Uh, they, they put the hill from the log flume first. Right. And then you're in the lazy river. Yes. Uh, they come up with a plan. She comes up with a plan. Suspiciously fast. Well, because she, first he says... Okay, instead of... Well, I think we could coast over this, right? Well, I think this is important. Okay. Because he buries her, right? Right. He doesn't think like... And and this is very key, I think, because his mom's like, why did you freaking bury her? Now you now you can't, you know, claim that this was a mistake. For some reason. <laughs> right. Well, well, it, I mean, he's burying her. He's trying to hide it. Like before, he could be like, "I don't know what happened." Call nine one one. Now he's like, "Well, like, sure, he'll have to go yeah. to court." But I think for a scared teenager, you, they would be lenient on him. Yes, if he was a disturbed child already. If 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 we know that, but so then you're yeah. So we'll go. She says we we have to. She goes. We, you know we can't run away because the publicity would ruin your chances for your medical career. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. You cannot yes. get into medical school if you have buried a teen. Yeah. <laughs> that is on the application. <laughs> um, so she hands him an apple, which he starts to eat like a weird rat. Yes, he's gnawing on it from the side of his mouth, which is which is throughout this movie he's gnawing on food. It's so it's such a weird. Maybe they talk about it in the book. That's only only thing I can think about is that they mentioned in the book that he gnawed on food. So this young actor decides he's really gonna like implement this note. So it looks like he does not know how to eat. It looks like an alien is pretending to eat food in a play. <laughs> <laughs> where he just sticks it in the side of his mouth and gums it. <laughs> well, she does. She like yanks it out of his mouth. Like put the, put the <laughs> apple down. <laughs> we should also note that they are schmacting it up so hard. Like they are playing <sighs> these parts to the ceiling in terms of acting level. And I thought, are these bad actors? I know Kim Hunter's not a bad actor. And I looked up this kid. This kid is a he won. A Tony when he was 11 and was then nominated for an Emmy a year earlier before filming this. So the guy can act. So it's just a director you know, being like, bigger, bigger. <laughs> well, don't, I mean, I don't know. Like, this is 74. Like, I feel like it's still, we're still like transitioning into, you know, from stage to screen. Like, I feel like. From stage to <laughs> screen? This is a Charlie Chaplin. No, I don't mean that. I mean, like, there's still a time period where like people are acting big as if they're on a stage in front of right. So, but she was in a movie with Marlon Brando, <laughs> famously big sure. in terms of like naturalistic acting. So she's seen it done. Okay, it's the director. We'll director. <laughs> um. So so she says, she decides. Look, here's what we'll do. We'll hide you in a back room where no one can find you. And then I'll tell everyone you ran away. And eventually when this all blows over, we'll move away somewhere and we can start over. Right. She says, oh, I think we have spare drywall. Yeah. Well, well, remember, I think this was the tip of the toolbox. <laughs> yes, that is the Chekhov's toolbox, which you see pay off <laughs> immediately later in the first act. Yeah. She says, here, take off the door with your new tools or whatever. Right. So. He takes off the... This guy builds a house, basically. He's, he should be a contractor. <laughs> yeah. So so they, so they underneath their bath... Underneath their um, stairs is a is a second bathroom on the first floor. So she basically... They basically drywall that up. They put a little... Um, There's an entrance in the pantry. Yes, a, a sliding door in the pantry. And then he can be in this bathroom that's hidden away. Um, Sounds like my first New York apartment. <laughs> oh, boy, you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so well, then, hold on, hold on, pause. Yes. Let people laugh. Let people laugh. Okay, great. Okay, okay. all right. <laughs> um, and back in. The, uh, 
so then he, she's going to like feed him food through there and all this stuff. Um, and then they have a system, you know, you knock two times, she'll knock two times if it's dangerous, four times if it's safe, which they do, I think, one time in the whole thing. So I don't even know why they brought that up. That does not pay off. They also yeah. have to be very careful because Miss Snooperson, their neighbor, yes. is next door, uh, whose name is Miss Schumacher. Yes. And she wears a very 70s style hat all the time. Well, she's I mean, gardening all the, the time. It's the same hat. Yes. It's a big, tall, brightly colored, not a bonnet, but it, it kind of looks like uh, the, the top of a choo-choo train steam <laughs> <laughs> is on top of her head. Well, you know, it's funny. The thing with the knocking, like you were saying, it doesn't pay off. Like even Ronald like admits that this is going nowhere. Because at one point <laughs> she knocks four times and he goes... She goes, it's safe. He goes, yeah, I know. I could hear. <laughs> like, he, like, clues to us, like, look, we're not going to do this knocking thing anymore in the movie. Uh, but, this, but the music, by the way, in this, I love the music. I love this. the music, too. It's, like, it's kind of mashy, you know, like, mash. Uh, it, there's this, that. Like, the all, game mash. Yeah. The, yeah. No, the monster mash. I, oh, yes. It's yeah. very scary. <laughs> no, but it, no, but it's very, like. It, 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 all those TV movies, it doesn't matter what the um, if it's if it's drama if it's drama, it all has that. There's always a clarinet playing very, you know. Yes, a love scene or a comedy. There's like full and very odd orchestral choices, and like you said, like a clarinet, mm -hmm. a lot of trumpet, a lot of Chuck Mangione esque. Love it. Yeah. Love um, shout out to Fred Carlin, the film's composer, who, mm -hmm. according to Wikipedia, composed more than 100 scores for film and television movies. This guy could really score. Am I he right? Could uh, oh, boy. Well, all right. Give him wait a chance for, to laugh. Wait for laughter. And laugh. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wilby? Yes? What do you want? Oh, uh, we're from the police, Mrs. Wilby. I'm Sergeant Lynch. This is Sergeant Carter. So the police show up, talk to the neighbor. She doesn't know what's going on. So classic seventies cops, by the way. Mm -hmm. Very oh. craggy white guy. And They're a black in guy. Um, trench coats. Mm -hmm. um, detectives. They go there. They ask the mother, "Where's Ronald?" He's not there. He runs away. Teenagers are always running away, which is, which by the way is like the police's mantra of this movie. Yes. yes. Teens are always running away. Uh, but the police are skeptical. They go, they find a ripped coat, some soiled shoes, um, and a note that says, I've done something to cause you unhappiness. Um, Period. That's it. Yeah. So basically, um, the uh, he's written this, this fake runaway note to trick the police. Yes, the police don't seem to buy it, which you think will pay off later. It mm -hmm. does not. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> they leave. So time goes on. And when I say time goes on, I'm just assuming time goes on. Because one thing about Bad Ronald is that it is impossible to tell how much time has elapsed in this movie. It could right. be a couple days. It could be years. There's we no, have no idea. There's no crawl at the bottom or whatever. A text that says like right. six weeks later or anything. The seasons which, don't change. He doesn't look any older. He just gets browner and browner. <laughs> right. Yes. A stagehand was just blasting him with with soot <laughs> yeah. between uh, the scenes. He, uh, his mother is getting sicker and sicker. She finally has to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she'll she, be gone for a week. He, she says, yes. So drink your powdered milk. Yes. Do your exercises. She has yes. him exercising and reading, reminding him to comb his hair and to bathe. And, and uh, the whole time he's also re, uh, writing his, his novel or whatever called the history of Atranta. Yes. And he's, he's drawing on a large scale, these big, very seventies Munka style uh, pictures of the citizens of Enchantra, but Atranta. Atranta, pardon Atranta. me, bad Ronald fans. Uh, one really interesting style. Now, I, I went to I went to art school. I've done a lot of drawing. I've never seen oh. this technique. Mm -hmm. Hey, here we go. Wait for applause. <laughs> and we're back. Thank you. 
one uh, style of drawing I've never seen before, but uh, this is Ronald's technique, which is on a huge sheet of butcher paper, Mm -hmm. you draw the person's body, Mm -hmm. uh, their clothing, Mm -hmm. everything surrounding them, but you save the face for last. Right, because you, right. (laughs) So everyone looks like the blank in Dick Tracy. There's just a big <laughs> void where the face is. Interesting technique. Uh, time passes. I wonder if I'm this guessing. will uh, come yes. back into play. I no. I was no. like, well, okay. that's that. Just yeah. a world detail. So he, the old lady, can't keep her nose out of their business. We're She's, talking about Miss Snooperson, y- by the way. Yes, she is. Like her head is always. And I don't know if it's the same like footage that they keep repeating. It's not. <laughs> it looks because like there's, it her head oh. keeps popping up. <laughs> so you see a shot from inside the house of Miss Snooperson leaning into the window. But this actress has a thousand and one ways to look like you're snooping. She leans in at one point. <laughs> she pops up like she's doing the elevator trick to a small <laughs> child. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> This is where your theory of we had just gotten out of silent movies actually would make sense because it looks like a Buster Keat routine of a million ways to look through a window. And she's always looking into the kitchen. And I don't know why. I mean, like only if, the kitchen. If this is supposed to be. He's got to eat like a month long period or two. Like, that's why we don't know. But like, it, it seems like it's just 30 minutes later. Because right. she keeps looking. Like what does she, she think she's going to see? Does she suspect that Ronald know. is still living there? We're never given a reason to think that she would. Maybe she has always done this ever since they've lived there. Maybe. And that's why she... She's a voyeur. Yeah. Um, so the door opens. He thinks it's his mother. Instead, it's a relative and a realtor played by the guy who does Picklet's voice. Yes. Um... I can't remember his name. I think it's John Fielder. Okay. Yes, John Fielder. Um, yes, and uh, they, real life piglet. Yes, <laughs> and they want to sell this place immediately. Um, because apparently his mother has died while getting that surgery. Right. And Ronald did not know this until this happened. So now he re- he is living in a house by himself. Um, there's lots of shots of him kind of just sulking, just ambling around the house. He's drilling holes in the house so he can see stuff from his little layer, as his mom called it. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's like, like he's sawing holes in the floor so he can kind of walk (laughs) through the walls and he can see everyone from a different angle and. The realtor finally, after I don't know how long, brings someone in who wants to purchase it, purchase, and they wonder, you know, this place is great, but there's only one bathroom. It's so weird that there's only one bathroom in this big house. And the realtor says, I guess bathrooms weren't just that important when it was built. Yeah. And then he says, but look at the molding. (laughs) Yeah. And she goes, I guess you're right. Yeah. (laughs) This guy's a freaking crack salesman. (laughs) (laughs) This woman is married with three teen girls. Yes. So that must be a, we don't see it, but the molding must be out of this world. (laughs) And the youngest is immediately suspicious. Yes. Also, I would like to say that when he's drilling these holes, if you were hiding in a crawl space or something, you would maybe put the holes in low areas, high areas, areas where you wouldn't see. Not, it's not smart, Ronald. It's bad, Ronald. Mm-mm, he mm-hmm. is putting a hole directly in the center of the wall, directly at eye level. Yeah, he actually lines his eye up with his yes. finger to the wall. But then he puts a little tape on there. <laughs> from the inside. Yeah, from the inside. Um, but, you know, the kind of hole that if you were moving into a new house, you would immediately say, oh, well, of course we have to spackle over these giant drill size holes that are everywhere. Yeah, but the, mold, but the molding, though. The molding. Oh, that's why they don't see it. It's yeah, the, the molding. spectacular it's so molding. You can't keep, take your eyes off it. You're as beautiful as a princess. You must be the one. So there's a new family moves into the house. Uh, the dad is Dabney Coleman, pre-fame Dabney Coleman, who is, 
I have the take that he is the only person ignoring the director and acting in a natural manner. <laughs> well, we should also say that um, Ronald is, I mean, as you would if you're living in a hole, he's slipping away. Like as much as you thought that he didn't understand reality when he first says a trant is real, now you know for sure when he sees through the hole the youngest daughter and says, you're as beautiful as a princess, you must be the one. He says this in a normal tone of volume while he is in the room next to this family that just moved in in a big empty room. Yeah, he might as well have had his lips over the hole. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how, that's, that's how loud and close he's saying this. That's what I said. What do you think of the house, Dwayne? And I never thought I'd be eating here. Well, why'd you say that? So this kind of moves moves faster. Like the family's living there. Um, and now the, the older daughter is dating Dwayne Matthews, who is the brother of Carol Matthews, the girl he killed. Yes. And he uh, immediately upon dating the eldest daughter sensitively brings up his sister's murder while they're all having dinner for the first time. Oh, yes. He says, uh, I thought I never thought I'd be eating here. Yeah. And they go, why? And he says, well, <laughs> the boy who used to live here murdered my sister. <laughs> and then somebody clunks their fork onto the plate. <laughs> <laughs> and now everyone's spooked. Um, and and Ronald, again, again, it, it, he is just either he's smearing himself with his charcoal drawings or it is just. Oh, he's Poop sooting it. And, he's sooting it up. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a little chimney sweep at this point. He's writing help on the walls. He's writing, you know, a tranta or whatever the place is called. Oh yeah, he has really like art directy looking crazy person graffiti on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Where there's big spirals and ha 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 written out like the Joker. <laughs> Uh, family goes on a picnic. Ronald sneaks out, sneaks out, and he eats all their eggs. He eats egg. Well, this is where we start getting into the theme of milk as a huge plot device because Ronald is making instant milk in yes. his his little crawl space. He does, he's tired of that instant milk. He chances going out to get a big glass of real milk and then stuffs three hard boiled eggs into his <laughs> yes. mouth. And at this point, the crazy neighbor peeks her nose up um, over the window, and she actually sees him. He goes to confront her. She has a heart attack, falls down the steps. He says, they'll blame this on me too, even though no one will. It is unlucky Ronald. Once again, he he, uh, cannot look at a woman without her falling and breaking her (laughs) neck. And by the way, he buries her too. Buries her under the porch. Yeah, which he did not have to do. No, he didn't. And so I'm saying, like... I he mean, could have just left her there. Right, and he says, no, they'll blame this on me too, but no one thinks you're there. So the youngest daughter starts hearing Ronald move around the house. And <laughs> mm-hmm. she thinks it's ghosts or something because they all she believes in supernatural stuff. Here's uh, a question about that. Yeah. Do you think that he is waiting to flush his toilet when everybody leaves the house? Is he flushing the toilet? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell what's on his face. You. <laughs> I, Fair enough. He's. He must be. I think. Um. I think the premise is that, he, whenever he can, he's getting out. So like at nighttime, he's walking around and stuff. Okay. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's from the book. I didn't read the book, but what I was looking at. Um. But he. I don't know. We know that he starts um, really getting upset about Dwayne Matthews being there. Yes, he starts filling in the faces of these these blank citizens of his fantasy world. He is the prince. His mother is the queen. Babs, the girl he has the crush yes. on, is the princess. And the evil duke the evil is duke. Dwayne. Yes. Um. And the way that these faces are put into the picture, it looks like when you go to Six Flags and you put your face through the hole. 
and it's like you're a mermaid or something. But it's, yes. it's a he's very cartoony with the bodies, very realistic with the faces. So yes. you can tell who they are. Yeah. Someone realizes someone's eating all the eggs, <laughs> which is, is so funny. Uh, then I just don't understand why he, why when they're gone, he doesn't freaking take a shower. That's a great point. Well, I think the mom kept on saying, remember to comb your hair, remember to do this and do that. So maybe he just was out of practice. Yeah. So he finds a diary in, in the older girl's room who's dating Dwayne he tries to get into it he can't um they blame Babs for trying to get into it and now everyone kind of thinks there's a ghost because there's just like things are breaking like you know they hear breaking sounds all this kind of stuff's happening so the parents go away for a vacation <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Promise me you won't yell. <laughs> Not one more sound, or I'll... You'll kill me. No, I never killed anyone. I'm not that kind of person. If my father catches you, he'll... He won't be home till Sunday night. Oh. How did you know? I'm Prince Norbert, ruler of Atranta. I know everything. Kids are all alone. And uh, Babs is left by herself in the house. And Ronald decides this is the big chance that he can make his move. And in the one part of the movie that actually is effectively creepy, uh, he goes into... I'm sorry, you actually don't see it. That's why it's creepy. She goes into her room and sees that he has plastered the drawing he has made of her onto her bedroom wall. Mm. And then from behind the open door, he swings it shut and he's standing behind the door uh, and grabs her. Yes. And he tells her that he is Prince Norbert. This is very his. romantic name. Yes. You Norby. give yourself a very... <laughs> If you're making that kind of fantasy realm, you really want to big yourself up yeah. and give and yourself he's, a. He's talk. He's kind of talking about her, like, and she doesn't understand who he is. And then she's like, "How do you know all this stuff about us?" And he says, "Well, I'm Prince Norbert, and I know everything. I'm the ruler of Atranta, and she is now Princess Fancetta." She runs off, and like you would, but um, she imme- she immediately figures it out. Yeah, she well, she's smart. Yeah, that he's Ronald Wilby. She really puts the pieces together. <laughs> um, she's better than these cops. I'll say that much. She runs out, yes. and instead of running across the street to Dwayne, the strong guy who knows what's going on and who this is, or just running down the street screaming help, she mm-hmm. runs into Miss Shoemaker, the elderly woman's house next door, mm-hmm. uh, and runs straight into her basement where she can be trapped. Well, I mean, to be fair, like everyone knows not to go to the freaking Matthews pool party or you're going to get burned. (laughs) (laughs) So you're going next door to the the lady's house. Yeah. She, she runs in and Miss Shoemaker, Miss Snooperson has a basement like in saw. Well, remember she tries to call the police, but he has cut the phone line. Yes. He's thought of everything. Yeah. Um, she runs downstairs, this basement from a horror movie, which has baby dolls hanging <laughs> from wires from the <laughs> ceiling and like rusty sickles in the corner. It's so crazy. And he's, he's roaming the house. And of course he's whistling like uh-huh. a tune, uh, uh, which is extra creepy. Then we get a little gross look into the director's personal life because we get plenty of panty shots of (laughs) up this 11-year-old girl's skirt, which made me feel absolutely disgusting. Well, she goes to the basement. He doesn't even go in. He opens the door, he looks, and then he locks the basement with a key. And he runs back home, rips up his painting of her, 
And yeah, I, I can't figure out if the baby dolls are hanging from the ceiling. Like, did the did the crazy lady do that, or did Ronald like hang out there a couple times while the pa parents were away or something and do it? I, it's so strange. I I mean, only thing I can think of is that Miss Snooperson had really intense hobbies, or. <laughs> Yeah, it was the thing her husband was into, and she just kind of locked it away. <laughs> right. Dwayne! She's gone. What? Perhaps she ran away. I found this note in her typewriter. You're everybody. Nobody trusts me, and I can't stand it anymore. I'm going away for a while. Don't worry, Babs. Ronald has one move whenever... You want someone to go missing, you forge a runaway note. So yes. he forges a runaway note saying that uh, she, no one believes her in the family and Babs is going to has run away, um, which he clearly can't do in her handwriting. Right. And, and everyone says, well, she must have run away. And then Dwayne says, well, if she didn't run away, then we should definitely call the police. They call the police and the police say... Teenagers are always running away. What do you want us to do about it? <laughs> of course. And and Ronald, he's pissed at the evil Duke. He's spoiling everything. And now he wants to... Now he, like, purposefully wants to kill someone. He wants to kill the evil Duke. He wants to kill Dwayne, and we get a lot, a lot of... Uh, very arty shots of him splashing red paint all over the Duke drawing, mm -hmm. mushing a paintbrush into the Duke drawing's chest, drawing a big David Bowie lightning bolt over the Duke's face. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not hard. Whenever no. he goes to grab Dwayne, you would think that the big football player would be a little bit more effective. This guy's got off. swim arms. <laughs> Ronald just it was sneaks into the living room while Dwayne is watching football and uh, bonks him over the head. Remember, Hog he, 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 he grabs, like, he comes up behind the couch, he grabs him from behind, pulls the whole couch down, and then jams a candlestick into his face or something. Which would definitely kill you. <laughs> but instead, it just knocks him out. <laughs> he ties him up in his room. Um, Old helmet head. Yeah, <laughs> the police are back. They're asking questions. Um, when he ties him up, that definitely looks sexual, right? Because he's hogtied with his face <laughs> down in the tied. mattress. <laughs> yes. Um, and this is when the police are back. And uh, well, oh, a man, a boy is missing. We better get right on this. Well, because we, no, but remember, the reason why they were worried about. Babs being missing is because she stood up a date with Jimmy Carter. <laughs> and that was the name that the writer gave to this boy. <laughs> when when did Jimmy Carter, when was he president? In the 70s. <laughs> okay. What was he the president in 1974? Like Let me see here. God, now we look like complete idiots. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not on jaywalking and this kind of thing. <laughs> Oh, oh man, Jay would totally take you, take you to task. He would have taken me to the cleaners. Mm -hmm. He was in office from seventy one to seventy five. Okay, so, so yes, right now, right <laughs> during when Bad Ronald was being filmed. <laughs> so and like we said, like you said, the police were being super chill. <laughs> um, and then the girls go out for hamburgers, leaving Dwayne to watch the game, and that's what all <laughs> happens. Right? Yeah, uh, and he likes his hamburgers raw, like a freaking, you know, real bro. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so the police are back and now they have egg on their face because what is it? They like, did they find Babs at that time or something? But cause he's like, you guys got to stay at a hotel. Oh, because, uh, what's his name is missing too. Dwayne's missing. So they're like, Oh, can you guys stay at a hotel? And they're like, no, we want to stay in this house. And they're like, okay, we'll, we'll lock you inside and watch you from the outside. Right. <laughs> just perfect we want to stay in this house where bad things happen and we're always hearing things and we are pretty sure it's haunted yeah you, just as long as you guys are outside and you have locked us in <laughs> we'll be okay ronald starts packing Dwayne starts making a ruckus the girls then, hear it then yes. Dwayne starts making a ruckus yes he was conscious before mm -hmm. when the cops were there and he was quiet as a mouse right um 
they start to tussle. The girls come down and see what's going on. They see some light shining on a boy. Do they? Yes. They see a light coming from the small hole drilled in the wall, but the light that they are shining onto the opposite wall that they they see it looks like they are two inches from the sun. Yes, and it is yeah. blaring. Yeah. Yes. He turned. Yes. A uh, uh, a flashlight has been pointed towards this ho- hole. Apparently. <laughs> They look and right. By the way, I thought this was great. Uh, this is a real kind of. This is some, only something maybe I would think is funny, but uh, the hole is right under this sign. That for some reason, when they hung up this sign, they did not see the hole. But the sign is for a pub called Donkins Pub. Yes, Donkins. Donkins Pub. Love it. And it is. <laughs> Yes, the frame is directly over this little <laughs> hole. One thing I wish that they had gone for was why couldn't they have put a portrait on the wall and then have two have him drill two eye holes <laughs> through the eyes? <laughs> that would have been nice. So they see this light. They finally see his eye spying them. Yes. And then Ronald explodes <laughs> through, the, through wall. the drywall. Like, like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> Like they have said they are thirsty and the Kool-Aid man yes. comes bursting through the wall. Yes. All right. Um, yes. And then he tries to run outside. The police catch him. He's screaming mother the whole time. But by screaming, you mean he's going mother. <laughs> yes. And uh, game o- movie's over. I mean, that's it. That's the end of the freaking movie. You There's see no, him in like- the car. You see they've saved Babs from the basement. Yes. They just kind of hug in the house and the movie peters out. That's yeah. it. Uh, Ronald has been caught. What more do you want, audience? Yeah. And and it, it's. Yeah, things just ended back then. We don't even get like a last line like he's not going to hurt you anymore. At least nothing <laughs> like that, is there? No, there's nothing. It is like he gets caught. He screams mother. And that's like the last line of dialogue. It's really hard to tell who your sympathy is supposed to go to. Is Ron supposed to be a broken child who's descended into madness, but we have sympathy for him? Or is are we supposed to think he's a huge monster? Well, if you read the book, it's well, very yeah. clear. It's we'll very get into clear. that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I thought was interesting, that the director, Buzz Kulik. Great name. Um, Kulik, yeah. Buzz. Um, he also directed another movie, another TV movie before this called Crawl Space, <laughs> where a family tries to adopt a boy they find living in their crawl space. <laughs> so this guy's got a real bugaboo <laughs> about households. <laughs> <laughs> That's also the first non-astronaut I've ever heard named Buzz. Buzz. Well, and then, of course, uh, Macaulay Culkin's abusive older brother. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, all freaking bullies are named Buzz, right? Uh, in movies. In the 50s, and and, and anyone with a flat top. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this, this teleplay was based on a novel by Jack Vance, who apparently wrote hundreds and hundreds of sci-fi and fantasy novels. This is one of the only things he wrote that was not dealing with fantastical elements. Uh, yes. and Except I, for Atranta, which is like the only like little piece of fantasy. Yes, he, he worked in what he knew. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully he didn't know anything else. <laughs> and he was writing from an experience. I had a idea that we we... The, this recording happened a little bit sooner than I thought it was going to. I was planning on reading the book that this is based on. And after reading the book summary online, I am so happy that I didn't <laughs> because one huge plot device that was very popular in the 70s and early 80s was statutory rape as an instigating incident. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in the book, Ronald is truly bad. He uh, rapes and murders almost every teen girl <laughs> in this household. Uh, he definitely murders the young sister on purpose. He yeah, and, murders it, the Babs. First, the first person he quote unquote accidentally kills, he first rapes her. Yes. And then kills her. Like, right. 
So so it's not accidental there. There's no accidents happening at all in the in the book. No, the title really makes sense in the book apparently. And and it, and and it says that like he kidnaps the girl into the room and while the, like she's in there for a little bit like for a while cuz like while the parents are nearby he's raping her while the parents are nearby. Yes. And then he kills her and then then it, they they actually smoke him out with a Molotov cocktail. The family figures out what's going on, yeah. blocks him in the crawl space, and sets the house on fire with him in it. So yeah. the whole idea of him exploding out of the room makes sense in the book because he is exploding out of a burning house. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm really, I'm really happy that they – okay, let me back this up. It's insane that anybody read that book and thought, you know, it would make a great basic network movie. Is this. Now, we only have to change a few things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, least of all the name. It should not have been called Bad Ronald. I mean, no. The book is pure Bad Ronald, but this is mild Ronald. Uh, if if. We had watched the version, a faithful adaptation of that novel in this movie. There's no way we would be doing it for the podcast. No. Too gosh. big of a bummer. <laughs> yeah. I, will say, I will say, though, that watching this movie, uh, the premise the premise in this movie, I do not want to see the novel made into a faithful adaptation. The premise of the movie isn't bad. Like, it's a good idea. And I think yeah. now if somebody made some kind of like minimalist horror movie out of it, it could really work. Yeah, I think um, I'm trying to think like what channel this would go on now. I think it could be its own movie, like an A24 style movie. Oh, certainly. But. You know, but that would the, any movie coming out would more align with the book than this. Do you think that this would be like an AMC series or something? No, I, I just think like you're not gonna find. I mean, they're gonna go all in on him being bad. Like I, that's why I like that it was a TV movie because, like, as creepy as this is, I almost. Um, like, I don't mind that kids would have seen this movie. Okay. Uh, you know, like, because that's how, when you look online, when you read people's impressions of this movie, when they saw it, they're always like, oh, it always freaked me out when I saw it as a kid. But it doesn't bum me out. But it would bum me out to know that a bunch of kids saw it if it was based on the book 100%. <laughs> you know? I think he should have at least intentionally killed the neighbor. Something. I mean, he he's a, trying to kill Dwayne, so he gets to that point. Yes, but before that, it's just like a, a very intense Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I... Yeah, I, I, th what did you think about... I mean, overall, I, I, I like this movie a lot. In terms of a really solid bad TV movie watch. I think this is great. It's an hour and 10 minutes. It really does move along for all the points where it kind of drags. They, they don't dwell on anything for too long. So you're not going to get bored for stretches. Yeah. And even when they, when, even when he's like sulking and stuff like that, and they're just montaging him. Like I, I never, I, you're still kind of, you're curious. Like you're still in the mindset of like, what would you do if you were in this position? So, and it never, and I never kind of feel like, Oh, I'm bored now. That's what I mean. That's why I think that this could be remade into something really interesting because it is something that you think about. Um, I don't think this mo movie answers any of those questions, but it, you definitely think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we did it. <laughs> did I we do it? We did. I think we did it. <laughs> 